What should youth be allowed to vote? This question may seem pretty odd at first, but it becomes a lot more familiar if we just change one word. Why should we be allowed to vote? I mean we the people, regular everyday people, who are often ignorant, apathetic, maybe not even of sound mind. There's plenty of evidence that we can't be trusted with this power. Wouldn't it be better if it only belonged to a small group of experts or even a single leader? Maybe it would. Letting so many people vote definitely has its drawbacks. But for now, we're going to focus on the reasons why regular people, even the most seemingly incompetent regular people, should still be allowed to vote. How should it be? How should it measure competence? How hard should it be? And who should decide all of this anyway? There are so many problems with trying to keep incompetent people from voting, it's practically guaranteed to create more problems than it solves. It would inevitably hurt people because, two, voting is the only protection a lot of people have. Without our votes, most of us would not be able to get politicians to help us out. It's not that politicians can't mean well, it's just that they need job security. If we have no power over their jobs, they can't afford to waste their time on us. But if we do have some power, then of course they'll have to listen to us, at least a little bit. And we can all count on some protection because... 3. We don't need to be that competent to benefit from voting. Yes, more competent people can often manipulate us. They can even steal our votes when we're not looking. But that's the point. These are our votes. Stealing them is a crime, and even though clever people can manipulate us, we're still better off than we would be if they could just do whatever without consulting us at all. So when someone asks, why should we be allowed to vote, we, regular people, the simplest and best answer is that it's the only way to make sure that politicians will care at least a little bit about our concerns. So now a question that seemed completely strange, why should youth be allowed to vote, should start to seem a little bit more familiar. Now, let's think about this question. It's true that youth are often well-informed, often work and pay taxes, and sometimes even take on a parent's responsibilities. But let's say for the sake of argument that all of this is only a minority, and that in general youth are ignorant, apathetic, and mentally unsound. The problem is, these things alone wouldn't make youth any different from millions of adults who are allowed to vote, for all of the reasons we've just discussed. So why do our rules about voting treat youth differently? Could it be because young people can vote in the future, after they've reached a certain age? Or because they get special treatment in court? Or because they get special treatment in general? Well, sure, but not really. None of these points affects the basic way the democratic process works. Future votes aren't any use when the government's actions affect everyone right now. And the special treatment we often give youth doesn't stop bad things from happening to them. In fact, youth often suffer worse from the same problems because they can't get away and they don't have much power to make people listen to them. No matter how much special treatment we give youth, it will never protect them very well as long as they lack the most fundamental, most basic protection of our society, the option of voting. Of course, simply writing a law saying that someone can vote doesn't mean society will actually let them. And even when it does, being able to vote won't magically solve all their problems. People who vote are still often unhappy with the government or with life in general. That's probably why so many don't even bother. But what's certain is that as long as people are not allowed to vote, as long as they don't even have the possibility of voting, they will be less protected. We've learned this lesson many times. If we exclude a large percentage of citizens from voting under the pretext that they're too incompetent, or that someone else has the right to be in charge of them, well, you can't really call that a democratic election. And sure, there's always a case to be made for restricting political power to a certain class, or to the experts, or even to a single leader. But if we truly believe in the democratic process, and believe that it has the power to help people, then we know it can only do its job when it's available to its citizens.